everyone, happy Thirsty Thursday. You may have noticed that Paula got taller. So, and he, she grew a beard. Um, no, just kidding. Um, this is John. Paula Hi. went out on an errand, so um, John's standing in. John is an avid home brewer, so uh, I, I when I invited him to drink beer, he seemed to just like want to be on the live right away. You didn't have to ask. So we're drinking a peanut butter porter today, and I'm I'm kind of nervous about Cheers. this because yeah, I don't know. This is probably the darkest beer that I've drank. Yep, that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. It's delicious. It's it's very different, but I, I once again like it. <laughs> we were joking around on the last live that what I figured out from this is that I like beer. <laughs> for all this. That beer's a good thing, yeah. Mm hmm Yep. That's the fun about this hobby is you get to drink your, your hobby. Yeah. What's the best beer that you think that you've ever, or like what's one that sticks out in your mind that you made? Russian Imperial Stout. A Russian Imperial Stout. Yeah. It's very similar to Porter's, and I technically don't know the difference. There is one, but <laughs> it, um, they're both dark beers, um, low in hoppiness, and that's what I like. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not into... A lot of hops like uh, strong ipas I, I can enjoy some of them but i prefer the dark porters some minutes darker, yeah. yeah and imperial means that it has like more alcohol content pretty much to it. yeah more everything right yeah yeah <laughs> so john's Delicious. out john's out for seriousness is what i'm hearing <laughs> <laughs> yes um all right so today we're going to talk a little bit about the sweet dreams almond coconut stout uh paula thought that we were going to be talking about a porter which is why we're drinking porter but uh, yeah, John's got That's the it. kit there. It's the brewer's best kit. Really now, what too. is the ABV on this gonna be? Let's see, 6.1 to 6.7. Pretty good. So yeah, yeah. pretty mid, I, kind of middle of the road yeah. there. Yeah, it's not gonna hurt you. But yeah. But enjoyable, yeah. Uh, the IBUs are 43 to 47, and then the original gravity is 1.061 to 1.065, if everything is done correctly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's open up this kit. I'm gonna tilt you guys down here so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, so first off, we've got the instructions. Now, John, how important would you say that like reading through things is? As well, <laughs> there's two kinds of people. I do both. <laughs> I do like to read um, ahead of time. I don't want any surprises. And they did all the work for you. It's It makes sense to follow their steps but it also makes sure that you have everything you need to brew because mm -hmm. every once in a while you forgot you you either broke your auto siphon or your hydrometer things happen and you want to be prepared that's a list i do the, at least a day before i start mm -hmm. i just read it over find out if there's if, if i am missing anything it gives me an opportunity to get it because we have people that call and say can i pick up a hydrometer can I pick this up? Because yeah, in the middle of their yeast, yeah, some something they they just don't have. So it's always good to go through your ingredient kit, make sure you're covered. So the, no surprises. Mm -hmm. No one likes surprises. Was there was <laughs> there like ever a story? I'm sure when you were brewing, where you had one of those moments where you're like, oh, "Crap, I don't have something that I need." So I, my brother-in-law Scott switched over to all grain before I did, and we did. Um, uh, Frank and beer like we threw everything into this pot except rice hulls mm -hmm. so it got stuck and we weren't prepared for that and we had to sanitize pots we're scooping it out nothing with the, as far as a kit goes I have I've never had a problem with the kit that's mm -hmm. the best thing they they have yeah. everything there for you. super easy but I have had things I have had bad all. things where I've brewed until 5 30 in the morning because the stove it was a stove beer uh -huh. um the ibus or the btu sorry on the stove weren't very high i've since got a new stove specifically <laughs> for that. she's like that's not gonna happen again don't worry yeah i didn't tell my wife i just said oh this is a really good stove you should we should get this stove. it, huh? it had a yeah it had a turbo setting on it for uh getting the, We're brewing. that's yeah, funny yeah, that's perfect. funny yeah, John and I actually, uh, I hung out at his house and we did a brew. I say together, he did it. I filmed it. Um, let's see, what was that? It was an orange coal Orange coal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he has really cute cats. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest part that I yeah. remember. The brewing yeah, was cool, awesome. but his cats were also adorable. Um, let's see. All right, so we got the labels here. 
Um, and so this is a limited edition kit. So the limited edition kits come with their own labels, which That's is kind of nice. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you make your own labels? Like I generally? do, and it's really, really hard. <laughs> So yeah, so the limited edition comes with that, um, and you can tell if it's a limited edition because on the outside of the box it'll actually show like a small preview right there of what the label looks like. Yes, yeah, so. they're much nicer than I can do. <laughs> All right, so first up we have um, crushed honey biscuit malt. So we have eight ounces of that. Um, this originated from the Netherlands. Nice. Um, is what I was reading about, and it has like a sweet honey-like flavor to it. Have I you love the biscuit flavor, breadiness, anything along with that? This uh -huh. yeah. Um, and then the other thing that we have is crushed black barley, eight ounces, and then chocolate wheat, eight ounces of that. It's gonna look like that. Now, are these like pretty common? Um grains in the for the style yeah mm -hmm. for the style yep it's they all have a base that's very similar and then you get into the specifics when you start saying i'm going to put in which you're about to get into the flavoring okay gotcha or lactose i mean there, there's yep. things coming that make it very unique which is weird because we got a lactose <laughs> so lactose is for mouthfeel is what i've been told it, it, yeah well the, yes but it also gives it that creaminess you want in, in this style of beer. Because lactose is just milk sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, and then the flavorings, like how he was talking before, um, we have Brewer's Best Natural Almond Flavoring. Uh, fun fact about me is that this smell is my favorite smell in the entire world. The smell wow. of like almond flavoring. I love it too, but it also goes with this. With the uh, toasted coconut chips. Yeah, you so, put those together. And this is, that's what makes yeah. this beer unique. So, I, I don't know, that sounds really good to me. <laughs> um, and then as far as malts, we're gonna have a dark dried malt. Um, we're gonna have a pound of that. Um, and then we'll have a total of 6.6 .6 pounds of the dark LME. So, look like that. Yep, dry malt extract, liquid malt extract. Is there, like, is there a difference between like the dried and the liquid? Like, is it just, it just, like, why is there two different? Just because? I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know. It, it's hard to get all of the... It's like molasses to get this liquid malt extract out of here. So I always put this in some warm water before I open it up when it's time to pour it in. So the, the warmer this is, the easier it comes so out. So you can get, like, all of it out. That's yeah. a really good idea. Yeah. And I've even... You know, you can even put uh, some of the wort in here, swirl it around to rinse it out to get all of it out. But... That's personal. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a preference. Yeah. That's a good idea, though. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, like you said, these types of beers aren't going to have a lot of hops to them, but we this do have... This one actually has a little bit more than... Two um, ounces some. of Columbus. So... Yeah, the IBUs are, are almost reaching 50, so... Yeah. It's going to have a little something to it. Uh, and then, of course, if you're bottling, we have five ounces of priming sugar to do that. And if you keg, just dump that in the, in the beer, and it just keeps your ABV from dropping. Gotcha. <laughs> Instead of wasting it. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Yeah, that's um, not much. We also have, have you ever used the carbonation drops that we carry? I have, I have, and that's what actually got me into kegging because for whatever reason, I mess with kits when I started. I wanted to make it my own. And um, the best kits I've ever made is when I didn't mess with the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, so, so when I've used the the different we have two different kinds of drops um it, did, it didn't really work for me mm -hmm. like I, I didn't get the results I wanted so mm -hmm. if if you switch over to kegging you can get the carbonation level you want and then bottle mm -hmm. from a keg that that's how I do it it's a whole lot more expensive but it it guarantees your carbonation level because I, I had to wait six months on one of mine uh, I had a Belgian okay. triple <laughs> I just put it in the closet and, and forgot about it. Yeah. And he I was gave... showing, when I was over there, he was showing me his closet. Is like all these carbon woods. He's like, yeah. and I have this, and I have this. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> just sometimes you have to forget about stuff you bottle. If, if you open up one and it doesn't carb, sometimes just put it in the closet and forget about it. Mm -hmm. And I had my brother-in-law send me a picture of a beer. He said, guess what this is? And I didn't even answer him. I went right to the closet. I knew what it was. <laughs> and I went to the closet, threw it in the freezer, fast as I could, you know, just here, 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 I wanted it cold, 
And then when I responded about 30 minutes later, <laughs> I had the glass carved up, had a nice head on it. But that's that's why I went to kegging. So the priming sugar it, with kits, if you don't mess with the recipe, you're gonna get the carbonation level you want. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, keg, I mean, kegging is like a useful thing. Because mm. you can, I don't know, I just feel like it's, it's the next step in It doing, is, it so. is, yeah. Yeah, when you get really into it. But if I, you, if you, I mean, if you, I'm thinking about like someone like me that has like a really small apartment and might mm -hmm. not have room for all that. I mean, yep. bottling. Bottling's the way to go. Into. Absolutely. Um, and so then, of course, we have the Brewers Brush Crown Caps for the bottles. Um, they always do a 60 count of. I'm pretty sure this makes five gallons. Um, yep. So they give you a few extra um, in case you like mess up uh, capping them. Uh, we have the muslin grain bag for steeping those grains that we talked about earlier. And then we have USO4. yeast. Yep, USO4. Um, this yeast is highly flocculent, uh, which if you watched the last, <laughs> I don't know if you watched the last live, but I was like, I looked up a whole bunch of like fancy brewing words and then I was Sam and Paul was like, wait a minute, how do you Where'd know you that? that? It was funny. <laughs> I was like, flocculation and um, there's one other one I was like stumbling through saying, I said it three times right and one time not. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. A lot, of, a lot of good terms, new terms, and it's fun. I mean, this this hobby is fantastic. I love this hobby. Yeah, it, I know it, you do. You get, to, you get to drink <laughs> your hobby. I mean, my, my sister you know makes blankets i'm like cool you know, but, and mean, they are they're fantastic blankets. blankets yes yeah but yeah beer so nice. you heard it here first <laughs> homebrew instead of making blankets yeah. <laughs> okay, that yeah. makes me laugh yeah the beer will keep you warm enough you don't need blankets yeah all right well that was your christmas eve uh thirsty thursday i hope you guys enjoyed uh what are you doing for the holidays we are dividing um, we were supposed to get together with everyone and we decided right. not to um, with like six families and then nieces and nephews who are in college too many variables and we'd rather you know spend time with our parents in the future right and, you know not to sound too dramatic but but yeah yeah no we're we're still gonna celebrate but we're gonna do it separately cool yeah well, I'll be, be fun. safe yeah and nieces and nephews are probably running around excited that they have all their new toys and stuff absolutely <laughs> i remember that as, starts tonight <laughs> i remember as a kid um on christmas like my my biggest thing was like i was the oldest and so if we got a group present like to all the kids i'd always like i was nice i'd always let them play with the toys first but then like new year's day i'd like get up at like 7 a.m like run downstairs <laughs> and like play with everything that yeah. i didn't get to play with so yeah all right, well, cool. Well, cheers to everyone. Have a safe and happy holiday, and we will see you in the new year, I believe. Yeah, yeah the next Thursday should be the new year. New Year's I Eve. I think. New Year's Eve. New Anyways, Year's Eve. Right. we'll see you be next safe. Thursday. <laughs> cheers.